Okay, let's do some math for fun. Here I have this limit and also integral for you guys. The limit as n goes to infinity of the integral from 0 to power over 2 of the nth root of sine to the nth power x plus cosine to the nth power x dx and also the parentheses. And as always, please pause the video and try this first. Okay, hopefully you guys have the time to try this right here, and now let me guess that the answer to this right here is square root of 2. Very nice. Right? So now let's see how we can solve this right here. And by the way, I got this question from Daily Math, so if you guys would like, go ahead and check out his book. The link will be in the description for your convenience. Especially if you want to work out some more similar questions or harder questions just like this one right here. Hmm, okay, let's see. Well, I don't really see that we should integrate this first, right? So why don't we look at the limit as n goes to infinity of this part, and let's see what happens. Well, in that case, let's go ahead and make some observations. OBS, and we take the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of sine to the nth power x plus cosine to the nth power x, just like this. And keep in mind, we just care about the x value goes from 0 to power over 2, so we just want the x values, right, from 0 to pi over 2. Well, we know that the nth root is the same as saying parentheses raised to the 1 over n's power, but because n goes to infinity, 1 over n will go to 0, so it's pretty much this to the 0's power. And the truth is, sine to the n's power x, and also cosine to the n's power x, most of the time, they are 0, because most of the time on this interval, sine and cosine, they will be, well, their absolute values will be less than 1. Only when you are at 0, then cosine of 0 is exactly 1, and only when you are at pi over 2 for the x, then sine of pi over 2 will be exactly equal to 1. Other than that, they will be like, you know, less than 1, and if you raise that to the infinity power, it will be 0. So it's an indeterminate form most of the time. Hmm. Alright, so let's see how we can handle this. Well, let's just do some algebra here first. I am going to factor out cosine to the nth power. Let's see what will happen, all right? So, as we can see, we will have the limit as n goes to infinity, and we will have the nth root. Factoring out the cosine to the nth power, we will have cosine to the nth power x, times, this will be, well, originally you have sine to the nth power x, now I will have to divide it by cosine to the nth power x. And this one will just be plus 1 right here, because we took that out already. Now check this out. We have a product inside, so we can just do the nth root of this times the nth root of that, right? So that's pretty good. Well, well, as we can see, this is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity. When we take the nth root of just that, of course, the nth power and the nth root will cancel. Very nice, right? So we just have cosine of x like that. And in fact, on this interval, cosine of x will be positive, so we don't need to worry about, like, you know, put the absolute value whatsoever. And let's see, we take the nth root. Hmm, we still have this part. This part is tangent to the nth power x. And we have the plus 1. So, that's very nice. And now, let's see, this right here, cosine x, it doesn't have any n, so we can put that to the front. So, this is the same as saying cosine x, and then now we have to multiply by the limit as n goes to infinity. And we have to look at the nth root of tangent to the nth power x and then plus 1, like that. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. And now let me just write this down right here for you guys. I will put down notice, and I'm going to break down this interval into two pieces. The first piece is that I will look at the interval from 0 to pi over 4, but do not include pi over 4 because tangent of exactly pi over 4 will be exactly equal to 1. On this interval, we will see that tangent x, right, this right here will imply that tangent x will be in between of 0 and 1. And now this is so good, because as n goes to infinity, we know tangent to the nth power x, this right here will be going to 0. So we don't have that part anymore. And just have 1 and instead of the nth root. So that's pretty much it on this interval, right? Secondly, on the other interval, which is going from pi over 4 to pi over 2. And notice that I did not put down the equal sign here, because technically, tangent of pi over 2 is not defined. 
However, don't worry about that last endpoint because originally this integral is like this integral function here is continuous. And you can also look at this, it's going to work out very nicely, so don't worry about that. Alright. So right here, I will tell you here x tangent x will be greater than or equal to 1. So when we have this right here though, if you put it back as n goes to infinity, this will be the dominating part. The only situation is you have to worry is maybe when x is exactly pi over 4, then in that case, tangent of x is exactly 1. 1, exact 1 to the infinity power is 1, right? But that's just one number. Anything after pi over 4, tangent of x will be greater than 1. In that case, you will have some number bigger than 1 to the infinity power. That will be infinity, and a plus 1 won't matter, right? So this is how we are going to utilize this right here. All right, let me just write this down right here for you guys. We will break this expression into two pieces. The first piece is we still have the cosine x. This is just on outside chilling, right? We will just write this down as 1 because on this interval, right? So we just multiply by 1, right? This right here is for the interval if we are in between of 0 and pi over 4, right? Because again, that will be 0, so that's nice. Secondly, we have the cosine x. And then, as I said earlier, we will be just pay attention to this dominating part. So we just write this down, and you see the nth root and also the tangent to the nth power. Again, the n will cancel out. So in other words, we will just have tangent x. Well, well, tangent x and also cosine x. This is the same as sine over cosine. So you see, the cosine will cancel each other. So as I told you, do not worry about that pi over 2 earlier too much, right? So this right here is just actually sine of x. And again, this is for if x is in between of pi over 4 to pi over 2. So I'll just put this down, pi over 4 to pi over 2. And now perhaps... If I put on the equal sign here, maybe it's arguably okay. Up to you guys, right? So, uh, yeah, just leave a comment if you would like to think about like the equal sign and all that stuff. Yeah. And now let me just write this down again right here for you guys. And then we will do the following. Well, this right here, it has two pieces. Depends on the interval, right? And then we'll just break down the integral. First, it's on this interval which is going from 0 to pi over 4. And the limit of this will be just cosine x on this interval, right? So we just have cosine x dx, and that's very nice. And we will add the second piece will be going from pi over 4 to pi over 2. So let me just write this down right here. And on this interval, this right here with that limit is just nicely equal to sine x. So of course, I'll write this down right here. And notice this right here is so crazy because you see when we have the nth root of sine to the nth power x and then the other one is plus cosine to the nth power x, right? This is the most common mistake for algebra, right? People will just cancel the nth root with this and all that. Well, in that case, it's almost true right here. However, you have to be careful that you have to change the limit of integrations. So you cannot just go from 0 to power 2 for both of them, right? Anyway, you can work this out in your head. Integrating cosine, you get positive sine. You're putting pi over 4, you get 1 over square root of 2. And then you're putting 0, you get 0. So you have 1 over square root of 2 first. And secondly, we will have to add integrating sine x, we get negative cosine. And then we're putting pi over 2, which will give us 0. And then minus, minus, well, because of negative cosine, right? So cosine of pi over 4 is again 1 over square root of 2. But minus minus is positive like this. All in all, add them up, you get 2 over square root of 2. And simplify it, you end up with square root of 2. Very, very nice. Right? So that's the answer to this limit and also integral question. <sighs> very good. And as always, that's it.